finance center has has been resilient, uh, very resilient during COVID. Didn't didn't require any help, um, and, and kept full employment. So we, we we have a surplus of employment. So the thinking was, well, how can we use some of that and and help those who who are in desperate need? So the idea is whether we can find. Um, Ukrainians with sort of certain skill set and actually match them to jobs that already exist in a very robust finance center. Um, and so the the idea started off really um, in, in that vein. We just started to think, what can we do? Well, one of the ways we thought is most of these people want a future. It's not just charity. So if we can find them jobs and homes and support them in other ways, then uh, then perhaps we can help a small amount of people. But if each, if, each, if each city or town of 35,000 people were able to employ and support a few, then that would make a big difference. What interest have you had from members in providing these jobs? Yeah, well, actually, in a very short period of time, quite substantial. So uh, a complete, uh, complete support in terms of the, 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 the appetite for people to assist. Uh, as it stands today, uh, we're looking at 29 well-paid full-time posts in various different fields within the finance centre. Um, but that's growing. So it was 20 yesterday, it's on 29 today, and I imagine it will, it will, it'll pick up pace. So we might end up with the ability to, in the finance centre, offer, you know, between 30 and 50 jobs to, to people with the right skills. Obviously, they'll need to be fluent in English, um, and have some administrative or professional skills, but we believe a lot of these refugees who come from cities in Ukraine, most of them will probably be women, as their men folk have had to stay behind. Um, will will we'll, are likely to have worked in banks or insurance companies or in law firms or accountancy firms or, or as a secretary in in, in some uh, company. So we think that there will be an ability to employ those, and that's just in the sector of financial services. And hopefully, this scheme, this this which we've called GES, Gibraltarian Ukrainian Employment Sponsorship Scheme. Um, is something that can be taken up maybe by other aspects of Gibraltar's community or other jurisdictions. You flagged a few possible logistical issues such as visa issues, childcare. Can you take us through these and what the solutions could be? Well, as, as you know, um, Ukra Ukraine isn't in the EU. Um, it isn't obviously got a relationship, uh, a pre-existing relationship pre the war with the UK. But the EU has, has given visa-free travel and, and work um, workability for three years and the UK has done a similar thing. So I think in Gibraltar it's evident from the way that the government have very sensibly and properly behaved so far with the Ukrainians um, are in a position to waive visa requirements and to give work permits. So I think we can address that, or the government can address that and I'm sure that they, they will they will be doing so, particularly where they're coming, not as, as in a charitable sense, they're coming to, to take a position of work and they're going to contribute, they'll pay taxes. So I think that, that deals with that. But of course, most of the, most of these refugees we envisage may be women with ch young children, possibly. So there will be educational needs, some training needs. So there will be a need for for support. Um, and also, we're looking at the employer to sponsor the individual. It's not just an employment job; it's a sponsorship. So we would ask that they do a little bit more than they would normally do to to find people somewhere to live, to help them with rent. Um, so I think between both the the government. And, and the employer, we can probably find a package which would make it very attractive for some of these people to come and, and look at Gibraltar as a, as, a, as a temporary or more permanent refuge. You've suggested they could be housed in Spain. Is this due to lower housing prices or are you anticipating any backlash to this scheme from the Gibraltarian community? For example, from those who are looking for a home? Well, I don't expect any backlash um, from I mean, Gibraltarians are, are generous people. We, we, we've all come from somewhere else, you know, we're not indigenous maybe hundreds of years, but we've all come somewhere else, so we've all been refugees at some point. So I don't expect any backlash. And anyway, we're looking at a scenario where a, an employee would be sponsored. So he would earn money, he would be able to rent. Um, and so there's not a question of, of providing free housing in, in preference to anybody else. But of course, th there's a reality, and that is that property is expensive. So if someone is able to, to, to live in, in Spain, cross the border, like many do, and work, then that would uh, make it a little bit easier for that person. So that, that's a possibility, and that might require some degree of interaction with the local Spanish authorities and making sure that they can cross the frontier without any hindrance. Uh, but again, I, I think Spain, as I understand it, is equally like the rest of the EU, adopting a very kind of uh, help, helpful uh, approach to, to Ukrainian refugees.
Finally, could this scheme be extended to other refugees or asylum seekers from other countries in conflict? Well, I mean, inevitably it can, but but I think the world is focusing on these, you know, expected five million. I think it's already near four million. Um, so, so at the moment, I think that's the immediate focus. But of course, once you create a scheme, then in the future it, it can extend to others. But I definitely think that it is it is now a moment where I think we all in Europe feel that that the least we can do, given that they seem to be fighting for us without our assistance, um, is is to at least find some refuge for for those who who, who are fleeing the war.